again, we're grateful to God for giving us this opportunity, and as an old say, this is not an accident, this is by divine design and providence, and, and God has chosen us today to be here, and Alhamdulillah, we have our health, and, and so, uh, and we can, we can worship God alone, and we're in an environment that, and that's actually um, designed for that kind of activity, and so nobody is bothering us. So we are, we are grateful to God for kind of arranging all of these uh, circumstances for us. Uh, <coughs> so uh, gratefulness to God is a, is a God-like quality because God is grateful to us, and so we have to follow His path, which is the only path, the uh, straight and direct path to God. There are no other paths, and so we are really grateful today for given this for having this opportunity and given back to God uh, which is only good for us and so it's not that God needs this occasion that, that we arrange here today uh, we we are the one who uh, is in need of this blessing and this uh, this huge uh, favor that God has bestowed upon us um, what I wanted to discuss today is Something came up and actually uh, uh, sort of directed my attention to chapter 79, which is called The Snatchers. And I never noticed this, and, uh, and, uh, uh, but I started reading it and listening to it, and, uh, and uh, something dawned on me that. As I said, you know, we never through with the Quran. We keep learning about the Quran more and more as God sees fit for us to learn. <coughs> and the idea is that, that what we do is actually coming from God. And so it should not be that, that the wrong concept that we are actually initiating this. This is coming from God. Okay, This, this blessing is coming from God. And every um, every word here says when when nazi'ate ghanan when nashitaate nashtan when sabihaate sakha so all of those first words that I said in Arabic they are all subject all of my subject so in all of these Verses, there is no mention, there is no concept of time. Okay? So, the way I'm translating, everybody else translated it, is, means that the ones who rip out violently, when you say rip out, you are actually conveying time to somebody who's listening to your, to your utterance your sentence. Because you're saying that you rip out, that means it's present tense. In the Arabic context, that's not the case. The Arabic context actually doesn't have a time going along with it. That is, that is extremely interesting. That shows the clarity of the Quran. Okay? So if, if you wanted to really say this, by the ripper, or, or violence or something like that. But you know, this it, it's very difficult to convey that concept to someone. And when God talks about this, when God says he is called of a Kulnashayan, he is the creator of all things, not created all things, not will create something. Okay. When he talks about Khalik, which means creator, that conveys something which goes on all the time. Okay? That's the trait of the subject itself. And that quality. These guys, this ripping, have this quality of ripping things. Please put yourself on, on mute. Thank you. Okay. 
by those who, who are gently removers or gentle removers, not by the one who gently draw out, which again conveys a concept of time, which is the present time. So this is this is what I'm saying all the time that we never finish the Quran. So all of these translations, a lot of people say, well, why don't you publish this? And because it's wrong. The concept that you have at some time is completely wrong on the Quran. Until you learn more about it, until until you until you realize what really God has in mind or what He wants to say to us. Okay. Even saying what God has in mind is, is the wrong way to put it. Okay. But these are for, for, for ineffable qualities of God that cannot be described with words. Okay. Then we're still arguing about Allah Akbar. We are putting something which is not one of ineffable qualities of God and we define it for ourselves and we attribute that to God. See how how wrong that is? Okay. And this one said not by 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 those who float everywhere. Again, floating is telling you is present time. By the floaters everywhere. That this is a timeless statement. Okay. So I have to go through this and fix all of these mistakes that I made, or we all made, because we didn't realize it. It never comes out in the Quranic study. Okay? Because that is not the time for the Quran to be revealed. There is a time and a place. And according to our understanding of the Quran at some time, okay? We may have been absolutely wrong. We did not realize what God is talking about. So what he is telling us here that all of these things, when the soul is being taken, being taken away from somebody, time for that person is stopping somehow. Time doesn't matter anymore. So you cannot, you cannot say things in those terms that you think that they are either present, past, or future. Okay? And they race ahead quickly. A slip of Sabir, earth is suffering. Sabir means somebody who is forerunner. So that should be for the forerunners everywhere. For something like that, for forerunners, for the quick forerunners. That's how you should understand that verse. So God is describing a realm for us that somehow past, present, and future does not do not exist. If you cannot make statements, okay? then you know people ask, "Well, oh, what was before God?" These are questions that come out of ignorance. Because when you say what was before time, you're talking about a past tense. Was is a past tense of to be. Okay? I am, that means I am right now. You are. Okay? And then the past tense of that is I was. But that's wrong. Or he was. That is wrong. There is no past tense. You can use that. That is the wrong understanding. That's the wrong methodology of learning the Quran. You have to ask God to teach you to increase your knowledge and wait for the time that's appropriate for you to understand what that verse really means. You get in a hurry, you're going to damage yourself. A lot of people do that and they end up disbelievers. Okay. So, 
Again, remember now why these things are ordered in a specific way for us to appreciate God more, to appreciate a, a realm which time does not exist. That's why I keep saying that eternity doesn't mean time of no end. That's not what it means. Okay? Eternity means someplace that time does not exist. That's the joy. And we, we cannot understand that. As I said, then we ask questions that are meaningless questions. Okay? I always say this about what was before the Big Bang. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's an ignorant statement. That's a wrong question. Because before the Big Bang, time did not exist. Time existed or started after the Big Bang. When space, time was created. Okay? So these meaningless questions end up making somebody a disbeliever. Because they ask a question and they cannot answer that question because that's a wrong question to begin with. It's a meaningless question to ask. And so then after that, when they are unable to do it, then nobody else can also answer it because they are also talking in terms of time. Okay? Then all of them become happy disbelievers. Or forget about this. This is a bunch of nonsense. Okay, so forget it. Okay? What does he mean by the ones who rip out violently? Okay? So that is the key here. By the violent rippers. That's how we should understand this. <coughs> By the gentle drawers. By the protests everywhere. And you see how much difference it makes? See how much how much better you feel now that you understand it this way better that there is a place, there is a realm that God is talking about that time does not exist. So you won't get old. If if paradise somebody that time existed and you got old, there's no paradise. Think about it a little bit. So God is giving us good news in every verse in the Quran. That's what He does. He tells us, I mean, all of these things are better good news as well as warnings. Okay? So we go down here and the same thing in my Mudat Birat Amran. Okay? Not then execute our commands. Okay? Then all of those who are Executing or executors. That doesn't sound good, but we have to we have to think of another word to 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 uh, uh, executors of all commands or something like that. That that sounds the way that that conveys the message that God wants to give us. Now God talking about time. The day when everything will be shaken up in a court. That is true. Okay. Now God changes from that, from the timeless thing to something which is time, and now this is the destruction of this universe. Which has a time attached to it. There's a cross now. That's a sign. Okay, the, the hour. The hour got closer or something like that that God is talking about. That's the time. Yom of Waktin Ma'alum, the day with the specific time. Okay? With a known time. The 
the God switches around, but that, but that it comes into a realm that has time in it, and that's exactly true. This is the situation that God is trying to describe for us, and as I said, we were oblivious to this before. We didn't know. It's not our fault. Time, when the time comes, God will see to it that we understand the true meaning of His, His word. And when you say something, it's the most accurate thing that you could possibly do, the ultimate accuracy that you could, uh, that you could actually uh, expect from God. Okay? That is amazing, isn't it? Yeah. All of my aftershocks. So, follow. Now, God is, is talking about something which is, has time in it. Now, on that day, the hearts will be this now, but now, now it says, Absara or Shaha. See? I will be fulfilled. No. They will be subduers of the eyes. Okay? Now they are talking about the Yahuluna. They will say, Have we then, have we been resurrected from, from the grave? Okay? Now this is a time thing still. Okay? When we were in our kunna, when we were, even though we were rocky bones, see how accurate and, and beautiful the Quran is? In every ayah, that's why God calls it ayah, a sign. Okay? So anyway, you can read this whole thing, and then God is talking about the story of Moses here. And the creation of the uh, Matthew and Madden. Okay. So again, as I said, God teaches us. He is the only teacher of the world, and there is no other teacher. You cannot go someplace and learn these things. Because no matter how good a translator is, that translator is putting his own upbringing into this thing. And our, our upbringing is that we, we are all raised in a, in a realm that has time involved in it. So we always talk about past, present, and future. We can't, we can't, we can't, we can't get rid of it. But God says, hold on a minute, be more, be more careful about this. And see what I'm talking about. Okay? So, those verses that God is talking about, the angels doing this, are all a timeless dimension, because they don't live in time. The angels live in time. Okay? We do. We are bound by it. We are trained how to talk in terms of time. And so that's why we are, we are short in understanding sometimes of what exactly God is talking about. But anyway, I, I took this as good news, to be honest. I took it as good news. That God is talking about a realm when in time has no meaning. Okay? So today, I feel a little bit better than yesterday, or a lot better than yesterday. Okay? So I'm going to stop here, and we'll finish this. I'm not